Huge thank you to Case Filters for sponsoring this week's video. More about that later on. Well, hello everyone. Michael Shamblum here, and welcome to another landscape photography vlog. This time we're in the Bay Area, and just look at how beautiful it is today. It is a really nice day. The forecast was calling for some pretty heavy rain by now, but it's just some mild rain. And frankly, usually when I see rain in the forecast, that's when I go outside. That's when I know you're gonna get the, the dramatic light, beautiful clouds, and uh, we're certainly getting some of that right now. Today we're gonna be doing mostly seascape photography. And uh, I'm thinking most of it's gonna be done on the wide angle lens, 16 to 35 want to do some long exposures and I'm just going to scout around for a little bit here look up and down the beach but let me show you a really cool sea stack here I think we're definitely going to photograph this guy right here I have photographed this beautiful grouping of sea stacks for many years I think the first time I visited this spot was actually in 2013. But look at how low of a tide it is right now. I don't know if I've ever been here when the tide was this low. I mean, I can get like right up to the rocks. I could even climb up on the rock. Maybe not the best idea, but just a really pretty day today. And you know what? may even be worth going up the, the cliff a little bit to see if we can get a good perspective up there, too. I'm really excited to take you guys on this little adventure, and I don't know, let's, let's hope that these dramatic clouds light up with uh, nice color. So I'm going to explain kind of what my thought process is with seascape photography. It's really all about, for me, when it comes to the wide-angle stuff, like getting right in the, right in the rock right in the rocks and, and in the water. It's all about getting that water to lead into the background. And I kind of like to think of these sea stacks almost as a mountain out there in the distance. Like how would you compose a mountain with foreground? I kind of apply the same rules to seascape photography. So I scattered around the coast for a while looking for a composition, but I didn't really find anything that worked photographically. And then I even tried going up the hill. The problem is, when I got up the hill, it was so windy, and the composition I found up there also wasn't all that interesting. But the light was really spectacular, and when I started walking down the hill, the dark clouds came in and blocked the sun again, so I almost thought I missed my opportunity to shoot those seascapes. Luckily, when I got down the hill, some beautiful clouds started forming again. So for filters here, I'm going to use the uh, Case Magnetic revolution filters and I like that these things are color-coded so you can see here we've got the CPL that's gray the blue is the ND8 and then the ND64 in gold I'm gonna use the ND64 but yeah I just love how lightweight and easy these are to switch on and off because you know as that light dies eventually you're gonna want to take off the filter it's so annoying having to fuss with it with a screw on and I've actually lost filters in the sea that way, so I like that these are magnetic. Wow, look at that cloud just, oh, oh hey dog. <laughs> uh, oh, that's so funny. Hey bud. <laughs> All right, so for settings here, I'm going to try a one second exposure since we're not that close to the water. Oh, there goes the dog right in the frame. Let's try and get the dog. <laughs> but I'm always doing an exposure bracket here too because I always want those extra frames just in case. It's really important to shoot the extra frames. Now as far as focus goes, a lot of people ask me about focus for sea stacks and for seascapes. I usually just focus on infinity, so just focusing on the sea stacks and the background there because I'm usually never that close 
to any elements within the frame. Oh, okay, I'll throw it one more time, bud. So I'm gonna bracket, I'm gonna do my panorama real quick one more time. Do an image for the sky. And then switch back down, here we go. I'm gonna let the tripod just kind of sink and then reposition it. Okay, okay. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a perfect one. Oh, look at that motion. Beautiful motion going on. That was really nice. That was exactly what I wanted. So right now I'm doing F7.1, 0.6 of a second, ISO 200. That's just the combination that I found worked well here. Let's see what this looks like as a vertical now. Maybe we can get the whole thing as a vertical. I can almost get the whole thing as a vertical, but I think the panorama might work out well. The only risky thing about a panorama is you never really know if they're gonna stitch properly. And then you just end up giving yourself more work. All right, I think we'll try and find a different composition to get that light right in the middle. Wow, look at this. This is so cool. I, I've never really shot this close to these sea stacks before. I'm usually way further back. It's kind of nice to be this close to them, honestly. Really cool. It's getting a bit darker, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my filter out to the ND8 this time. That should be enough. There we go. Easy, easy. That's what we want. All right. One thing to think about with the water motion is it's great when you can get the water coming in to the frame, but it's, it's also nice to get the water receding. And some of my favorite shots are actually of the water receding back out. So don't just focus on the wave coming in. Also try some shots with the wave coming out. You, you never know, those might end up being your favorites. Cause I know for me, I'd say more often than not, my favorite shots are the ones where the water's actually pulling back into the sea. Now you can see here, as I'm taking these shots, I'm constantly going back and just kind of bracketing just to get enough detail in that sky. And this is all almost a habit that I have that I kind of bounce back and forth. And uh, I'd encourage you to also do the same, make sure to bracket just in case. You never know if you need them. You might not need them. Cameras are getting so good now that you might not even need to bracket, but not a bad idea to at least have the extra frame so that you don't get back to Lightroom and realize, oh no, I didn't have that element that I wanted, so. Oh, here's a good one. Oh, that's a really good one. Careful, it's coming in. Whoop! <laughs> Here we go, here we go. This is a good one. All right, let the water recede. This is gonna be great. Ooh. Really cool, I love watching the water recede here. That was a really nice wave. Wow, look at that. Look at that water motion. Really love the framing of these rocks right now. Beautiful. Some nice glow on the horizon right now. This is perfect. Probably gonna have to move in a second or else I'm gonna get blasted by this wave, so. I'm gonna get this last one right here. Wow, look at that. Oh, that is awesome. All right.
One thing I like to do is mid shoot, always make sure your stuff is clean. Just kind of go through and wipe down the camera because there's really nothing worse than cleaning water spots off a photograph that's messy and dirty. Some people have nightmares about clowns and about monsters. But me, I have nightmares about, about water spots. Cleaning water spots off in Photoshop. That's, that's the nightmare right there. <laughs> All right, at this point, I think it's dark enough to take off the filter. Switch to F11 and kind of pull down my shutter speed to 0.4 of a second. But again, just my favorite thing about these is how easy they are to just take on and off. I can always throw it back on if I want to do a longer exposure, but I mean, within a second, it's packed up, so super handy. So I want to thank Case Filters for sending me this kit once again, and I've been using these Revolution filters since August. I brought them on many trips and put them through a ton of different scenarios been really really pleased with the quality. Now I know this video is sponsored but I have been using case filters as my main filter set for almost two years now. So if you're looking to get a set for yourself please check the link in the description. You can see we got some dark clouds coming over and the rain that was uh, predicted is finally finally coming in so I'm gonna go ahead and put this camera away for a second wait to see if maybe light breaks through but I think we might have seen the best light of the day. So at this moment, I really thought that sunset was done. I packed up my gear and it started raining pretty hard, but I stuck around and chatted with my photography friend on the beach. But then to our surprise, the clouds actually opened up, the rain stopped, and I went back out in the water. So the rain kind of subsided a bit and it looks really pretty out there. So I decided to come back out here and try a few more exposures. Oh, here's a good wave coming in. Oh, that's a big one. Hold on to the camera. <laughs> let the wave re recede here. Actually, you know what? That's looking really nice as a vertical too with the way the uh, clouds are positioned right now. So maybe I don't even need to do a uh, panorama. Here's another good wave coming in. That is a strong one. Well, that was a pretty strong wave. <laughs> I am soaked right now. This is a good wave too. If you're not soaked after a, a seascape shoot, was it really a good seascape shoot, you know? My gosh, look at that. Wow, we really lucked out though, getting this light coming through. It started raining pretty good. It seemed like that was gonna be the end of it, but this is super nice right now. So I'm just using another Zeiss wipe to really clean the lens. All right, so right now we're doing ISO 400. I'm at F4. And then I've got still that 0.6 of a second for my shutter speed. That's looking really nice for the waves. I'm just getting some of these coming in. Do my bracket. I think that's it, but that was beautiful. It was really nice to be able to see this beach in a different way. You know, I've been coming to this beach for many years and I've never seen it this way. I've never seen it with this kind of light and I've never been able to get this close to the sea stack. So it's really cool. I did have so much fun at this shoot that I decided to revisit this location the next day and see if I could get a bit more direct sunlight. And here's what I shot. I 
guess if there's any takeaway from this video, maybe that's it. It's, you know, if you go to a location and you get good conditions and you get a nice shot, don't just write off that spot as being done because there's always something different to do. There's always different tides if you're at a beach, different conditions. And then you as a photographer also grow and your interests change and your skill set changes. And, you know, so you might be able to offer something different to the spot, even just based on you as a photographer, not even the conditions or the other variables. So with that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And yeah, catch you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.